Aloha. Welcome to another episode of Think Tech Hawaii. My name is John Strandberg. I'm your host for Your Business in Hawaii. And thank you for tuning in today. Well, for those of you who would like to turn in live, you can visit www.thinktechhawaii.com and you can view live or you can find us on YouTube stations later. So today I have Kathleen Lee, who is rejoining me from a different show to talk about branding and how it affects your career. So I want to welcome Kathleen. Hi, John, and Think Tech Hawaii. You? Thank you for having me here today. I'm doing well. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you again. We're I know at Think Tech Studios, we're changing our format a little bit. We're able to... Mm -hmm. Instead of being in studio, work from our offices, wherever we are, I'm at my office and you're obviously at your office. So I hope everyone enjoys this new format. This is my first time doing it and looking forward to continuing on with this. So Kathleen, tell me about yourself and what made you come up with this idea about branding? Sure. So I am, again, my name is Kathleen Lee and I am a consultant with Kathleen Lee Consulting. Um, which is my career coaching and resume writing company. Um, I came up with the concept of uh, my company based on my experiences professionally. So along with that, I'm also um, a PR consultant and a video journalist for the Filipino channel. So you consult in PR and you're a journalist. So you kind of Correct. see everything in the world. So sure. let's yes. just dive right into it because everyone that tunes in usually is a career person or professional in Hawaii and hopefully around the world that sees us. So how do you present yourself? Okay, what's so it, what's important um, to be mindful of? Right. So I, you know, today we're going to talk about the importance of branding for the advancement of your career. So branding is essentially um how you would like how you carry yourself and how you you would like people to perceive you accurately and that um and then we're going to cover three points like how you present yourself in social media um how you can maximize networking opportunities and and how you can really bring out um the best of who you are in order to advance towards a career that works for both your interests your passions and what you're good at we can, okay. we can start with the so, social media. If you like. um, let's go ahead and start social media. Because I'm, I'm, sure. okay. I'm thinking so, my Facebook and LinkedIn could use an update. Right. Okay. So um, because we are shifting towards um, getting our sources through technology these days, a lot of recruiters actually um, go through social media networks to do a little bit of a background on um, potential candidates or people that they want to join. Um, their companies, and that's through LinkedIn, Facebook, or even you know Instagram or Twitter. And um, if you do like a quick Google search, you'll you'll see that about ninety percent of recruiters are actually going that route. You know, um, a lot of them still go through LinkedIn, of course, to get an idea of a candidate's profile, especially the ones that have their profile publicly um, exposed or available. Um, but people do go through Facebook. Like the casual social networking um, avenues that you know we post our you know photos of our friends and um, things that we do on the weekends. People go through that as well, um, and and so on our end, if you if we we can use those particular mediums to advance ourselves. So um, for Facebook, for instance, uh, employers will look at you know what type of things you volunteer for, the people that you associate with even like the way you spell words. So I, I always advise people to be very mindful of um, what they post. And one guideline that I personally use is post things on any, post anything that you feel you would be comfortable with talking about um, publicly or in an interview. So, so basically anyone walking on the street, if they came up and asked you a question, you'd be okay with answering. So, no, so if you're like me, I avoid politics as much as possible on social media because mm -hmm. it just it's very divisive, and I don't like to be divisive. I like to think people right. do like me versus not. So, again, it is again, a team. So, 
like you can you can do that um you know they do say that the general guideline is to um for mindfulness and tactfulness is to avoid talking about politics religion sex or money um but it depends on your branding if you would like to be someone that um wants to be involved in politics um you know post things that you 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 believe in and um those particular things could open you up to other other opportunities uh people might be looking for someone that could be um a government affairs representative for that particular or a, a particular nonprofit might be looking for someone to represent them so it really depends on how you would like to brand yourself okay so as we're talking, which social media platforms, I know we talked about Facebook and LinkedIn just now, which other platforms mm -hmm. should we be concerned with in terms of branding ourselves? I think we should be concerned with all of it, um, especially if, because everything nowadays, even if we believe that something that we post is private or locked, we have friends or friends of friends that, that may be able to, that have the access to share that with other people. And, um, possibly potential employers. And, um, and this is why I always tell people to be careful. It's not prioritizing um, one particular social uh, media medium over the other. We really have to be mindful of everything that we use out there because whatever we post is published. And it's so easy to take a screenshot these days and have you know your particular post be distributed um, rapidly. Yeah, we see a lot of that in the media now where someone said something and they can't retract it because there's a screenshot. Right. And exactly. It's, exactly that. It's just, yeah, I tell my kids, whatever's on the internet is forever, no matter if they can delete it or not. And I'll, I believe someone discovered a repository of old Snapchats somewhere online. Mm -hmm. So because Snapchat's supposed to disappear after a little bit, it's forever. Don't, don't. Right. Don't count that right. out. Anything online, anything online that you post can be easily retrieved and used um, for you, for your advantage or against you. It depends on whatever you post. So, Yeah, coming from an old IT world, I would say emails count in that as well. I uh, from my agree experience, with that well. you definitely want to control your words and emails. Spelling is huge. I'm a proponent mm -hmm. of proper spelling and grammar. So yeah, I, I, I see where social media can be. So when you talk about branding, let's go back to our primary target, branding yourself. We talk about social media. What is the next evolution after social media that you want to talk about in terms of how do I brand myself to find that perfect job or to get that job? When it comes to using your social media accounts and outlets, you mean? Yes, yes, only because if I'm looking for a nonprofit job, do I want to show off that I've been volunteering all these years, even though it's not for that nonprofit? Or yes, what, what are your suggestions? Uh, I think that you bring up a great question, John. So I, I would say yes to that, especially if you're looking for, let's take that particular example. Um, if you are looking for a job in a nonprofit, you want to give them the accurate idea that volunteering for certain things is something that you have done naturally. Um, so if you'd like to uh, post certain photos of, of you doing these things, go ahead. Uh, some people might feel uncomfortable doing that. I know a, a lot of times people who, you know, volunteer don't necessarily want to take credit for, you know, what they've done for that particular day. But um, you can do both ways. It does. You don't necessarily have to take credit for it, but you can just um, have it present it in a way that makes it so that you're appreciative of the opportunity for you to volunteer for these certain things. And you know, so uh, when a potential employer looks through it, they can say, "Oh, that's really cool that this person has gone out and done this." Um, and while your experience or like your volunteer experience may not necessarily be directly connected to the company that you work for. Isn't that how we get a lot of, um, a good amount of our positions anyway? The reason we we show them what we have experience in is to let them know that we have skills that are transferable to whatever they're looking for. Skills and interests, because we were talking about volunteer opportunities. 
Okay, how about instead of volunteerism, let's call it, I want, I need a new job in an accounting world. Okay. Can you give me an example how it works? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so if that is something, if you are going to pursue something in the accounting world and you would like to give, um, if you want to leave the imprint or impression that that's the position that you're particularly looking for, um, look through articles online and um, post the ones that you feel have helped you out. You know, make it make it intentional in a way where you can say something like, oh, like since I'm in this field or this is what I've studied, um, I found this article to be helpful to me and maybe it could be helpful to you too. So um, be intentional in what you, you post and what you share online and have it be reflective of your interests, whether it's you know, your academic interests, your professional interests, or your personal interests. Oh, very good. So we're going to move on. What, what's to the next topic? Because you said top, sure. we're going to discuss three of them. Let's move on to number two. What, what do you suggest on number two? Sure. So our number two Remember. was how to maximize um, networking situations so it could help you, one, with your branding, and two, again, keep going back to the theme with the advancement of your career. Um, if anyone should know anything about networking, it's it's you, of course. <laughs> um, and, and we know that networking, that's how we met. That's how you and I met, was through a networking opportunity. And um, I've told people that opportunities like that aren't necessarily a race for you to get as many business cards as you want. Uh, so whenever you find yourself in situations where you can meet people within your industry or towards industries that you want to move towards, make a genuine connection by building rapport with them. Um, have a target two to three people that you would like to meet. Uh, you can definitely still distribute your business cards to you know, a lot of people, but focus on making genuine connections. Or the day after or the week after and relayed back to whatever you had connected on during that networking event. So again, let me reiterate, networking events are not a race to give your business cards to as many people as possible, but to make genuine connections with people so you could, so those connections could be mutually beneficial for the parties involved. You know, it's funny you said get business cards. I just took a phone call a few minutes before this interview of an old friend says, I came across your business card in a colleague's business card box that left. And uh -huh. she, she gave me the name. I'm like, I don't recall meeting that person. And I jokingly yeah. said, I think I gave him my card as a get out of town free. Like, thank you very much for your time. Go away. So it was one of those where you just hand off a card to get rid of that person. Because that's what they're there sure. for. They weren't there to make a genuine connection. And mm -hmm. obviously, because I don't recall meeting this person and I'm like, no, I don't remember the person, but I do remember the company. So that's at least a, something there. Well, there you go. Yeah, and, so and going back to that, you know, uh, make yourself, oh, how should I say this? Um, present yourself in a way where you're comfortable enough, dress comfortably enough to be uh, memorable. You don't have to have like, you don't have to wear like a fascinator on your head or you know, wear super bright colors, but, you know, some people have, like, distinctive things that uh, that they know can, can work for them. Like, I know some professionals that style their hair a certain way um, that make people remember them, or wear a particular, like, piece of clothing that seems to be consistent. Um, and a lot of times people will be like, hey, you're the person that, you know, that wears florals every time I go to the event. Like, things like that, um, but make sure it's comfortable enough and, and not too gimmicky, but comfortable enough for you to feel confident enough to you know, know that you are going to be memorable when you make these connections. Yeah, I networking right the events, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dark blue kind of guy myself, obviously. But I, when you say something memorable, for me, mm -hmm. I find that most events I attend, I'm usually the tallest person in the room. Welcome to Hawaii. Well, and I'm also one of the biggest. And that's how they remember. I I feel horrible when I'm meeting people again and they go, oh, we met the last time and I forgot because 
they weren't memorable. And it, it bothers me, but at the same time, it's like, help me help you by doing something memorable or at least reaching out after we are meeting. Right. Which I do like to do. Which... Well, don't, don't feel too bad about that because, um, because if you've made an impression and you don't remember the individual and if they approach you again, it just gives you a second chance to reinforce that connection. So don't feel too bad. Well, I, I do. It's, it's, it's part of my job to grow business. And it's like, if I forgot someone's name, I'm not growing the business. So you said first impressions count a lot at networking events. That's something I've always believed in. And you mentioned attire, wearing something memorable. I mean, how important is it to fit in quickly with dress? Very important. <laughs> I say that because I, you know, as much as, you know, we believe that, okay, let me go back to my personal beliefs. I, I think that it's always good to get to know people on a deeper level, aside from the first impression that they make. But we have to admit that first impressions are, you know, are impactful enough for us to make these connections. Um, I, I say dress for the part. If you would like to meet certain, or if you're in a particular crowd, um, you know, kind of read the room if you're going to an event pay attention to, you know, what the nature of the event is. If, like, here in Hawaii, if, if it says, hey, aloha, where um, requested, you know, go with that theme out of respect for the particular event and the people that are throwing it together. Um, but going back to first impressions, because these events are targeted towards inviting a lot of people, it's always good to dress, I, I like to say dress sharp. Um, it's the safest way to go, you know, dress sharp, dress comfortably, um, and dress in a way that if, if someone said, Hey, you know, like, what if I took you for an interview today, you would be comfortable enough in doing it in those particular networking events anyway. So. Okay. So we talked about dressing for success so dressing for a potential interview at a networking event. How do you pick the networking events? Cause I think that's just as important as going to one is which one's the right one to go to? And that's going to maximize would, your brand too. Right. And I think that's a great question, especially since there are particular months where there are a lot of things going on. For instance, this month we had the opening day of the Hawaii State Legislature. So a lot of networking events um, in town are geared towards, you know, meeting our local legislators. So it really depends on your interest. Um, in order for you to figure out which which best fits your needs and where you would like to go in your career, look up certain events that you feel may have the people that you would like to connect with. Um, for example, if you would like to um, be involved in a nonprofit that focuses on the advancement of women, there are a lot of events and a lot of nonprofits that you know put together like fundraisers and, and just mixers that catered towards those particular causes and, you know, that demographic. If you are into, um, let's say, just meeting people or entrepreneurial endeavors, there's also a lot of that. Um, I, I've actually, because I I searched that out, you know, what happens um, when I look through my social media accounts and the invites that I get is that they're geared towards what, people think that I may be interested in. And this is why I say, again, it's important to deliver what you are genuinely interested in because then the world and the people around you respond accordingly. Um, if I know that you are not going to be interested in like a, a running gig or a race, and I'm not gonna forward that to you, um, but I've had people say, hey, Kat, I, I noticed that you hosted a running photo. Would you be interested in, you know, meeting this individual who also runs? And, and I make a connection that way. Um, and, and sometimes that connection turns out to be like a business transaction or a, a business partnership. And, and that's why I think it, it is always important to go back and define what you are interested in and where you want to go, just so that that's the brand that you are genuinely putting out there. 
Did you want to join okay. a running group, John? Yeah, no. Uh, my my knees prevent <laughs> me from running. They scream and yell. So we talk about networking. We talk about social media. Let's go on to the third. I mean, we're rolling along. I don't want to leave this sure. train of thought. So what what else can you help enhance? You know, I know there's every one of us has the good and the bad. So let's talk about how do we enhance the good? Because we, the bad always shows up quickly. We know that, but let's talk about good. Uh -huh. how, how much uh -huh. better can we be? How do we enhance the good? Okay. So we can always do a, a deep dive of, again, and, and I've said this numerous times of what we are interested in and what we feel that what we do would make a difference. Um, I like to think that, you know, people have a general idea of what they like, um, whether it's like a sports activity, a volunteer opportunity. Um, and if it's something that you are interested in, but you haven't delved into it, research that and see how you can get involved. Um, for, again, let me take a, a personal example. So I, you know, I like volunteering for um, campaigns, for instance, um, people who are running for office. And in doing so, I've, I've learned that, you know, when I go to particular events, I meet people with the same interests. And then that kind of um, connects to, hey, I, you know, I'm part of like this organization or I, you know, I'm with this company. Would you be interested in this? So um, in order for us to be headed towards where we want to, we really have to know what we, who we are and what we are good at and where we think we can make a difference. I know that's a lot of, it's, it's, it's daunting for some people to do that kind of a deep dive, I think, but um, it's helpful in the long run. So if you know where your interests lie, uh, the, you can start, start anywhere is, is you know, what I say all the time. If you don't have to volunteer right away, you know, go to a meeting. Um, Cause a lot of times like-minded people meet together in the same places. So that's one way to kind of enhance um, the best of, you know, what you can offer to the world. So how would I enhance my best qualities to make it easier for others to realize, hey, I might be the best choice for that promotion? or that job oh, or to get a job sure. after. Because a Can lot you of us, that? Um, so how, do you, how do we enhance our best qualities to make it known that, hey, I am the right person to get that promotion. Uh, I've, in truth, in many of my jobs over my career, people sought me out, not so much as me applying for a job. So how do I get that out to the community to understand that this is, who I am, and these are my best qualities. Sure. Um, let's go back to uh, something that I said earlier is uh, start anywhere. Um, if you feel like, like you mentioned, if you feel like you are a good accountant, um, see if you can volunteer for certain um, like companies or nonprofits that are, you know, that may need help in like assisting individuals um, with certain things. Um, like it really go it really goes back to uh, doing your research and starting anyway like it doesn't matter where just start anywhere uh, like I know volunteer opportunities have actually opened so many doors for me professionally um, for like uh, one example is that uh, I you know I've been writing for the Phil I'm Courier since 2014 uh, as a volunteer writer and through that particular opportunity, because I, I love writing, and that's why everything that I currently do in my career involves writing. But through that volunteer opportunity, um, I was able to, someone had offered the video journalist position as, as an option for me to, to further my career, to further my interests. So start anywhere. I, I really mean that. Start anywhere. Start today. Don't procrastinate. Start anywhere. Okay. So let's go back to enhancing my best qualities. What should I make sure is a standout on my resume? 
because websites like LinkedIn, I could actually post my resume that resides there. How do I mm -hmm. get my best qualities on a resume without, uh, it, it's a Hawaii thing to be humble so you don't promote yourself, but you need uh -huh. to do it somewhere. So someone comes along and says, hey, I think I want you to be my next assistant my next vp whatever position or title you're looking for so the resume is important i'm just trying to figure out how to do that without patting myself on the back <laughs> well I, I genuinely thank you for uh, tying it back to that um with the whole uh the representing yourself through your resume so i feel like uh, a good amount of times people have a need to regurgitate certain job descriptions when it comes to representing themselves on your resume, which is, I don't think it's the way to go at all. People already know what the job entails. What I recommend for people to do is to highlight what was it about what they did in particular positions that made them stand out or that made them excel in that particular or the particular positions that they have posted on your resume. Again, we already know the job descriptions, and you can use that as a guideline to figure out, you know, how to tailor your resume towards a particular position. But um, you mentioned that we struggle with dealing with, you know, this happy medium between humility and letting people know what we're good at, and and that is definitely a line that everyone, even I myself, straddle daily but if we are not going to be the ones that say hey by the way we did this then then who's going to do it and and that's why I tell people you work hard for you know whatever it is that you did in whatever position that you were in you know put that on there because that not a lot of people were able to accomplish like what you did um, you know and if you were the best at it write that on there if you were the only person or you were the first person that you know, initiate a program in your particular company. Put that in there because it. The point for people and employers is to hire who they think is the best person for the job. Well, and if you don't have experience, right? If you don't have experience in that particular position, you show them why you were the best in you know these particular jobs you held before. And, and how that motivation and drive is transferable to any job that you can tackle on next. Well, you know, we've been talking now for a whole 28 minutes. Right. So I, we do have to go. The show's only half an hour long. But I do want to thank you for coming on to the show and sharing. I could hear the passion, and I definitely want to continue with this conversation. So maybe in a future show, we can continue on. But thank you again for being on the show today. Yeah, thank you. viewers out there on Think Tech Hawaii to come back every Thursday for your business in Hawaii, whether it's myself on or one of the other hosts. But check us out at www.thinktechhawaii.com to come on the show or suggest show episodes, email it in, and we will take a look at it. And at the same time, if you're there, you want to contribute because we're trying out this new online uh, type of interview process. Be more than happy to have you come on and join us. Until next time, this is John Strandberg from Think Tech Hawaii.